Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel for a brutally honest career Q&A. Okay, so I have a list of career questions I'll be answering today that I personally think are pretty hot topics. So feel free to let me know in the comments if there's any other questions that you would like me to answer and I'll try to get back to them as soon as possible. Okay, so the first question is, would you switch jobs out of cybersecurity if you had the chance to? And I think the question to this answer is probably a yes because while I do like working in cybersecurity, there are just other areas I would also be interested in. And if I were able to, you know, just automatically find a job or one of my dream jobs in those other tech sectors or even somewhere outside of tech, then I would probably go for it. But of course, cybersecurity is always going to have a special place in my heart, especially as the career I've kind of gotten into after college. But if I wasn't working in cybersecurity, I would probably go back to software engineering or data science or potentially just being a digital nomad traveling around the world and just working in various different places. That would also be pretty cool. What do you hate about cybersecurity? Okay, so we're already getting into the juicier questions. I think what I hate, well, hate is definitely a strong word, but maybe one thing that I just dislike about cybersecurity, which may also be something that people like about it, is the fact that news news changes and updates so quickly that when I read an article today, the next day there may be a new update or maybe there's a patch out today and then the next day it's found that there's some other vulnerability that, that needs to also be patched as well. Yeah, basically there's always things changing and, and all the information you know as of right now could basically be old news by the time tomorrow comes or even in a few hours because things just move so fast in cybersecurity and especially when it comes to different hacks and exploits because obviously those are things that spread very quickly and companies also want to move as quickly as possible when they're patching these things. Yeah, yeah, basically just having to stay on top and be online basically 24 7 even if i'm not actively reading you know cybersecurity articles 24 7 it does have me thinking about them a lot yeah sometimes it's something you just can't turn off especially when it especially if there's a big hack that may impact your company or some product that your company uses you know that can be pretty scary especially now in a smaller cybersecurity team those things impact me way more than they used to at a bigger company yeah i definitely spend a lot of time thinking about those things and all the hacks and exploits and things out there that could impact us and that would definitely be one of the biggest downsides in my opinion working in cybersecurity and i also made a video on the top downsides of working in cybersecurity so i can link that down below if you guys want to check out more about my rantings on that but on the other side of things i also think it can kind of be seen as a positive if you're someone who loves that kind of stuff while i am not someone who loves always keeping up with news there are people out there who really enjoy that and always staying on top of things so it could be a negative to me and a positive to you so it all depends and by the way i'm reading uh questions off my phone so if you see me looking down how stressed do you get at work so typically i would say on like a regular basis i'm relatively low stress i try to not get too emotionally overwhelmed by my job and by my work in general um but there are days where i feel like there's a lot on my plate and i have to get a lot done at least in my current job which i've only been here for a few months now and i mean that is a long time but it's also not as long to the point where i'm able to do every single thing that all of my other teammates can do so because of the newness i still feel that definitely gives me some stress slash anxiety because there are tickets that come in and i have no idea how to handle them or i don't really know the steps to be able to fix them or remediate them and yeah those are definitely the stressors so basically anything that is a bit ambiguous that i may not have done before can stress me out a little bit but i don't think it's in an unhealthy way i think it's in like a how do i figure this out kind of way um which i think is actually the perfect environment for growing and learning but i will say that on the days i do feel stressed it's typically when i have a lot of meetings and even though my current role is relatively low meetings there are some days where i have a lot of meetings or at least relative compared to every other day and on those days i definitely find it harder to get my tickets done or get my daily tasks done because by the end of the day it's already three o'clock or four o'clock and i still have like three tickets in my queue that i haven't started yet and that's what stresses me out but i also think right now i am taking relatively low stress tickets just because i don't have as much experience as my other teammates so i would say they likely may be more stressed than me but relatively my team is definitely pretty good with that work-life balance stress-free sort of work experience or work environment and my manager is also very accommodating to life happenings and situations so i do think that's something to know as well having a good team good teammates good manager those things are very important to 
not add to your stress because compared to previous roles that i've had where i may not have been as comfortable going to my manager for certain things or going to my team lead with certain concerns that i had those were the teams where i had added stress due to just like the people side of things and dealing with bureaucracy basically and every company has bureaucracy every company has those unspoken rules of who you shouldn't talk to and who you should talk to you and stuff like that but I definitely think that my current job has a lot less of that compared to my previous role so that definitely helps alleviate my stress environment so I think overall on a day-to-day -day, I have about low to medium stress levels have you ever experienced burnout in cybersecurity so my experience with burnout has definitely been I think a bit different than other people's for other people's it's when you work too hard and you kind of fizzle out and you are tired and you don't feel that motivation to do the things that you typically do in your day job as well as outside of work but i feel like there's also another side of burnout where it's you're doing the same thing every single day and there's basically no more growth in your role and that causes you to burn out which is actually what i felt in my last team in my previous role so in that team i was working on a lot of different things with automation engineering with python as well as helping development teams work on their cybersecurity slash testing plans and while i did think that was very interesting work i also felt like it was very mundane because my team also fell under the it governance side so a lot of my day-to-day -day was reviewing documentation and testing plans and those things are very tedious let's say and it also got to a point where i felt like i didn't really know how much value i was creating or how much value i was giving in the work that i was doing and i was also the youngest on my team and if i tried to picture myself on this team in the long term which which it technically would have been because i had just graduated from my rotation program i definitely did not see myself um enjoying what i was doing but that was also because the original project that i joined this team for had changed and use very little of my technical skills that i felt like i was losing my skills in a lot of the pen testing and coding that i was previously doing and i did have a team lead who was very helpful and understanding in helping me through this process and finding me a new project or working on other things i may have been more passionate about you guys kind of know what happened from there so yeah i do think there's a side of burnout where it's where you may still be good at what you're doing but maybe you don't enjoy it as much or it's not your or it's not one of your passions and after a while of doing that it kind of becomes very mundane and even then i didn't want to get up for work i mean even though you know i still got up and logged into work but there are days where i just found it very hard to physically get myself out of bed and log into my computer downstairs it just felt like you're just running on a treadmill on a loop and i did not like that feeling at all and that was also the turning point where i started looking for new jobs and opportunities what was your worst work experience so i've shared this story before on one of my previous videos and i don't remember exactly which it was but i think it was like one of the lessons learned videos that i posted previously but long story short at some point in my career there was a person who was who was taking my work and presenting it as their own not even in a plagiarized way they just took my code and presented it as their own during um, daily stand-ups and team meetings and i was only working for about a few months at that point so i didn't really know how to deal with that situation and i let it go on for a lot longer than i should have but eventually you know i talked to my manager i also talked to that person i worked it out and i only worked with them for that rotation which was a year so it wasn't that long and even though i would say well i was in it that was a very negative experience i also learned a lot from it and i also was pretty proud of myself on how i kind of dealt with that afterwards and even just confronting the person i was very very nervous to do so but once i did it i was very open with how i felt and i think that was really beneficial in getting my point across to them because i don't think they even knew how that was impacting me and because i let it go on for months they probably thought i was okay with it so yeah it's definitely both sides but now i can look back and say even though that was one of the pretty negative work experiences that i've had it was also a really good learning experience for me so i'm so glad it happened so early in my career is cybersecurity actually a good career choice so i feel like this is going to be a yes and a no or i guess just it depends i would say people who are into cybersecurity are definitely a very niche group of people who are in tech um most cybersecurity teams are a lot smaller than development teams and analyst teams and every other tech data science team out there because while there are aspects of cybersecurity that are very technical and non-technical so i do think that you can get into cybersecurity without having those hard technical skills i feel like when you're on the outside looking in cybersecurity looks like a very high pressure environment which i do think it is especially when you're you know on the blue team or on the red team and things are obviously you know you're protecting people's data their money 
their information, their bank account numbers. Those are all very important things. And, and if you're one of the people protecting those assets, then obviously you want to be very confident in your skills. And I think that's a reason why a lot of people steer away from cybersecurity because it's very high pressure and, and it's also relatively fast paced considering all the hacker news and things that you'll need to know and keep up with on the job. But I also think it's one of the most rewarding jobs in technology that has all the benefits of being able to work with the business side and the legal side, as well as being able to work with developers and all the technical teams in your company. Because anytime a new product is brought on or anytime, or anytime your company creates a new product for the public, you're likely going to have some kind of cybersecurity review or a pen test done or some kind of audit. There's always going to be some cybersecurity incorporated into any application or product that is going to be online, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> and a lot of times in most sectors, there are going to be compliance things that require you to get pen tested anyway. Even if you don't have an internal cybersecurity team, you likely still have some third party that's helping you do those things. Everything online touches cybersecurity and that's why I think it's such a good place to be, especially if you want to be in technology, but don't just want to be a developer or a project manager or one of those commonly popular roles. I think cybersecurity is something that you can probably bring those skills to any role in technology. I mean, it's never going to be a negative thing that you know things about, you know, how to secure an application or how do you do a network scan. Those are all going to be helpful in your toolkit going forward to new jobs, even if you leave cybersecurity. So there's a lot of perks that go into having a cyber career as well as the, as well as the quote that I always bring up on this channel, which is, which is that there's going to be 3.5 million unfilled jobs in cybersecurity in 2025 or 2023. And that's a lot of jobs and companies are going to be trying really hard to recruit good cybersecurity talent. And that's why I think it's one of the best times to get into cybersecurity, even if it's something you're just remotely curious about. You can just go online and do a few hacked boxes or capture the flags. And even that will give you the basic knowledge or foundation of whether or not you think you might like cybersecurity. So it's relatively easy to get started and a lot of the tools are open source and free. So you can always test whether or not you wanna get into it and try to get an internship or some kind of early career job. And not everything in cybersecurity is going to be high stress, high pressure, like the blue team or the red team. There are going to be some in-betweens or it may be relatively less stressful and high pressure. So if that's the only thing holding you back, I would still say go for it, just to try it out. What's the job search process really like? So I'm actually going to be making a video on how I got my first cybersecurity job with all my work experience, the interview process, negotiating, choosing between offers that I had, and that'll all be in a separate video. But I do think that the cybersecurity interview process can definitely be difficult and tedious to study for because when I was looking for jobs, I think I already mentioned in my, my job search experience video that I was looking for cybersecurity jobs, but I was also looking for software engineering jobs. Actually, the majority of jobs I was applying for were software engineering. And that was really because I was really looking for a very specific type of cybersecurity job. And that was typically for a cybersecurity analyst. But I also wanted to work for a company that I had heard of before or had used before. So I had a very niche, I guess, criteria for the jobs I was applying for. I know there's a lot of remote jobs on Google that you can look up on their job board and they're all remote and they're actually all paying really decently well but because i hadn't heard of them before i wasn't really applying for those like right off the bat and it just so happened that most of the companies i did know were hiring for software engineering roles and even if i applied to software engineering and cybersecurity roles i actually heard back from more software engineering roles than cybersecurity even though my previous job was almost entirely cybersecurity roles because i was in a cybersecurity rotational program so i was really surprised but also not surprised because I only had about two and a half years of experience and for a lot of cybersecurity roles, they are looking for more years of experience and most of the time really specific cybersecurity skills and tools that they already know or are already listed on your resume. So I do think that's something to note while you're looking for a cybersecurity job, you should always look at the job requirements and see like the exact tools that their cybersecurity team uses and see if you can learn that before you apply and put it on your resume, at least so you can talk about it in an interview or be able to put yourself ahead of the game in front of other candidates that might be applying for that same job. So I only really have my experience to work off of, but I do think that software engineering, while cybersecurity is in high demand, software engineers are also very much in high demand. I mean, that goes without saying, but for software engineering, as long as I'm able to code in at least one language proficiently, I will be okay. I will be semi-confident in my interview, even if I don't have every single data structure memorized. But for cybersecurity, 
there's just so much out there that I was just studying everything, everything from my CompTIA Security Plus certification, all those topics. And it felt like I was studying for a certification exam again. But because I got that certification, I think that was very helpful in helping me get this current job because a lot of the questions were around were around different topics that are very generalized across cybersecurity. Like maybe they'll ask you about firewalls or VPNs or different protocols and port numbers. Those are relatively generic or you'll probably expect to see those in a cybersecurity interview. But it's definitely a lot harder to study for cybersecurity interviews compared to coding interviews because they're a lot less straightforward and you have no idea what is going to be asked of you because the breadth of knowledge that you may need to know is going to be very very wide even compared to coding because with coding you can probably grind out the code for a little bit or not just a little bit but you know and you'll probably get a general sense of the types of questions that you may get but for cybersecurity you could read a thousand question banks and there could be another set of thousand questions that could be asked to you that you've never seen before. So not to scare anyone, but but I would definitely study a wide breadth of things and not just go too deep into one area when you're studying for cybersecurity interviews because you want to make the most of your time and as long as you can talk about it just a little bit and be able to expand and connect it to other concepts in cybersecurity, then that'll already be very helpful. How did you get your first cybersecurity job? So I'm actually going to go into this a bit more in depth in my next video, but I actually got my first job as part of attending a tech conference, which was the Grace Hopper celebration. And I've been attending this conference for the past five years. Hopefully I can go again this year. And if I do, I'll be taking you guys along with me, but essentially it's a week long conference and there's a career fair and they do interviews and offers on site. So you could be leaving the conference with a job offer already in hand, which is a really cool concept in my opinion, because Normally companies make you wait, you know, weeks, months to get an answer and I think that's just ridiculous sometimes. But yeah, I basically talked to a few different companies and my previous employer was also there and when I talked to them, I really liked the team that they were talking about and it just happened to be a cybersecurity role and the only cybersecurity role that I even applied for because I was really just looking for software engineering roles after I graduated from college and yeah, I just ended up having a really good conversation with the recruiter as well as I guess sort of like the hiring manager for the role that I was being, I guess, potentially hired into. So definitely go to conferences, go to those local job fairs because you never know who you're going to meet. And talking with someone face to face is always going to be more helpful than just applying online. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions and I'll try my best to answer them. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.